All right, I'm just gonna park. Dad, why did we stop the car? Yeah, we're gonna charge real quick. Don't worry about it. Where are we? We're charging the car. Dad, I don't have time for this. Why are we here? No, we have to charge real quick. It won't take long at all, I promise. Like how long? Like an hour and a half, two hours, yep. tops. Nope. Yeah, I'm having my boyfriend come down. Where are you going? I'm calling my boyfriend. No. Hey, oh. hey, hey. Oh. Bye. She's sassy. What kind of car does he have? Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I want to make two quick shout outs. One to Tesla for changing my life, and two to Harry's for keeping me fresh in this video. Yes, many of you may know I've been driving a Tesla Model S that I bought completely totaled from an insurance company and repaired myself many years ago. Now, Tesla doesn't really like people fixing their own cars, and they've been slowly deactivating the supercharging ability on cars that were on their unsupported list. And if you aren't aware, supercharging is Tesla's ability to charge a car very quickly. You can get up to a 50% charge in as little as 20 minutes. So as luck would have it, Tesla removed the supercharging ability from my car. Because, well, they still have control over the vehicles long after they've been sold. Now, there used to be a process you could go through to get your car recertified so you can buy parts and get the supercharging re-enabled. Well, very recently, the new policy states that Tesla no longer offers this as an option. So basically, if you buy a car needed repair, fix it, bring it into Tesla, they'll still happily look it over, work on it for you, but not allow supercharging or DC fast charging. And yes, I inquired, they won't even let you pay for it. Now I wanna get angry and jump up and down and scream and yell at Tesla for devaluing my car, or better yet, turn it back on myself. But then I remember when Elon Musk said this. You have the choice of uh, the supercharger, which is and always will be free. That was the old Tesla. This new Tesla is now threatening legal action if you turn features back on that your car already had. Just for turning it on, you don't have to use it, you just have to turn it on. Now, if you're a regular guy that bought his car at auction, fixing a car that had minimal damage, thinking you got a great deal, well, you didn't, because one of the best features that makes Tesla a Tesla is no longer available, or if you do have it, you're living on borrowed time. For example, my good friend Alex from the YouTube channel Legit Streetcars, I bet him $1,000 that after the video came out of him getting a Tesla for cheap, that Tesla would remove his supercharging access. He said, Rich, no way is Tesla that petty. I said, well, watch this. A few months later, this is the video I got from him. All right, Rich, you won the bet. When I first bought this six months ago, you bet me $1,000 that I would eventually be blacklisted from supercharging and you were right. I just plugged it in. It was able to supercharge six months ago, but it indeed has been blocked. But unable to DC fast charge supercharge, I need to replace the little battery. It was on back order forever, but I have a new one now. And then it also says on here to supercharging not available. So you were right. You won the $1,000 bet. Uh, but considering the times right now, I completely understand why you changed the $1,000 bet to some life-saving essentials. So I got you some disinfective wipes. They didn't have antibacterial soap, so you get the regular stuff. Hydrogen peroxide, that should help. Um, and then food, lots of food. So I got you some goldfish crackers, uh, some Nutella, and I know you wanted really high quality toilet paper. So I got you this stuff. It's a little gritty, but it works really well. This is worth at least a thousand bucks today. So have at it, I'll ship it out to you soon. Good luck out there, Rich. You were right, I was wrong. You won, I lost. Now Tesla does this research by scouring auction sites and hoping you rat each other out by emailing the address listed in their document for snitching submissions. Now keep in mind, this issue really only affects people that have the ability, time, and need to fix the cars themselves, which admittedly is a very small market. So those that have purchased their own Teslas right from Tesla brand new, you are awesome. Keep being awesome, you're Tesla's ideal customer, and congratulations. None of this applies to you, but I'm sure some of you will watch half the video and then complain in the comment section anyways. Now, whenever a Tesla blows up, crashes, or catches fire, it makes national headlines and makes the company look bad. Why add more cars to the mix? It only affects a small group of people anyways, and out of all the Teslas sold in the U.S., only about 5,000 or so went to insurance auctions to be repaired. About half of those were put back on the road. It's a small percentage of the population. Company image is key, and who cares about the minority? Paint them as rogues. Say that fixing Teslas endangers the lives of others on the road, even though most of the Teslas that are blown up have been due to distracted driving, crashes, or road debris. This is just like the prohibition. 
I know this is a stretch, but hear me out. In 1920, the U.S. government didn't want people to drink alcohol anymore due to crime and public drunkenness and poverty because, well, it was a bad image for the United States. Sound familiar? So they banned it. But one thing you can't stop is someone's desire for something. If someone wants it, they'll eventually get it by any means necessary. So people smuggled it and started making their own, so the government decided they were going to take action and start poisoning the alcohol and killed about 10,000 people or so. The population at the time was 105 million, so that's only 0.009%, so that's fine, right? Sacrifice a few people for your mission, no one's going to notice, and the U.S. still looks good. Just like refusing to supercharge rebuilt Teslas. It only affects a small group of people, so who cares how they feel? In this episode, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, the re-enabling of supercharging is now something that Tesla will take legal action and seek compensation for, and I would never encourage a legal activity. So I'm going to show you how to lay down and take what Tesla gives you. Like my good friend who paid $12,000 to have Tesla look over his car to recertify it for supercharging, for only a month later, Tesla will disable it and say, we've changed our policies, sorry for the inconvenience. Do you know what most people would do if you took $12,000 from them and promised a service that was never delivered on? Probably not be as nice as my friend. He's a big fan of Tesla, so he just, well, you know, took what Tesla gave him. Now, the Model S isn't completely worthless without supercharging. It's a fine automobile, and there are some that are still running around that never had the ability in the first place. Now, people always say, Rich, supercharging only for long trips. Well, I'm going to live my life as I normally would, and I'm going to see what it's like living without supercharging and why it's actually a good thing. All right, so today I have to head to my friend Guz's shop at Argo Cycles for an appointment at 10 a.m. It's 9 a.m. now, and I'm usually a procrastinator, but today I'm leaving my house with plenty of time to actually get there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. For a nice drive. Okay, any minute now. Any minute now. Any minute. Oh, sh not enough range. Sh not bad. 120 miles. I'll take it. All right, this is going to be good because I have 74 miles left. I still have a ways to go before I get to Gus's place. Uh, I've been kind of puddling it along with uh, only using 206 uh, watt hours per mile. Uh, so it's not that bad, but when I get there, I need to charge for sure. What's up, man? What's up? Uh, I need to charge my car. You should have bought a gas car. Yeah. There's plenty of them out here. I'll sell you one. Yeah, no, I know, I know, but I have to charge. I have like almost no range left. I just have to go real back real quick, all right? Now, Is that cool? No, we, we, this isn't a charity, pal. He's going to get pissed if you go plug it in back there. Yeah, I know. You just, know what? You yeah. should have bought a car. You want to borrow a car? Yeah. I'll actually, let you use my car, it's but you can't charge it up. It's powered by gas, though. Yeah. At the environmental impact right. on a gas car, you need to. just really quick. You can't. It'll you take can't me two you seconds. Just two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. The answer is no. Da, 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 da. Uh, whatever, dude. Hey. I thought I told you no. Dude, it's not a big deal, dude. I'm it telling you. It is a big you. deal. This oh, isn't your electricity, it's man. It's just, listen, just like two hours. That's all it is, man. Two hours. That's no. it. I said two no. hours of no, just look, two hours. Look, look, look. Dude, you want to charge your car? Just two, yeah. Fifty bucks. It cost me fifty bucks to fill my car. Fifty bucks to fill your car. Listen, just listen, just two hours. That's Call all a tow I truck. Need. Tow truck. It's a little extreme, isn't it? Wow, dude. Wow. Oh, sh my scooter. All right, so I am literally behind an abandoned Applebee's right now. I have about eight miles left. That's not enough charge to really get anywhere. And I'm gonna double check and see if these are available uh, outlets right here. Let's see what I could do. Oh, this is, I have to drive up on the grass and plug in. This is gonna get messy. I hope there's power in these. Okay, good. I'm gonna have to plug my thing in there and figure that out. That's gonna be fun slash interesting. Tesla, thank you again. Here I am behind a dumpster because there's no charge points. 
Uh, I use PlugShare, all the apps. There's just nothing in this area that has it. So I will be parking this car right here to plug in for the next maybe 15 hours or so. Who needs Tesla superchargers when you're at a Walmart and you have Electrify America, Electrify America, I just wanted to thank you so much for saving me. I am sorry that Tesla terminated my supercharging access. Tesla unfortunately doesn't realize that you can plug in a Tesla anywhere and get it burned up, but whatever. Unlock the charge port. Okay, Electrify America, come through in the clinch here. What are you doing? Ready, pricing, what the fuck? Okay, that's not gonna fit. So had I read the instructions correctly, I would know that these are CCS only and the CCSs will not charge my Tesla. CCS, these are all CCS, so okay, thanks. Okay, this is no big deal because I'll just buy the CCS, the Tesla adapter, right? And it looks like those don't exist. Cool, but there is a Chatmo here. Tesla made a Chatmo adapter, so I'll just get that. I called Tesla and they don't make it anymore and it's $700 on eBay for a used discontinued product. And if you filter by which stations use them, it looks even worse. I was going to buy it until I realized Tesla also canceled my DC fast charging as well. Oh, wait, 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 there's a Tesla place right there. This is a new Tesla location opening up and it looks like they have some Tesla charging stations there. So I'm gonna try that one out. <laughs> okay, that light's not on, but... Da, 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 da. Oh, come on, man. Any of the... Ugh. Open port up. Da, 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 da. Oh, come on. These don't work. This one doesn't work at all. I don't know what's going on. This is the future. This car doesn't take gas. You know that. Look at that. La di da. Must be nice. What's that like? Ha! Huh. What are those cars doing over there? They're charging, sweetie. We can't do that. Electric vehicle parking only. Who else is park? Who else is taking up that charging spot? Is that what exactly? Ah, uh, lame. All right, we're here and we're charging. Thank you, Charge Point. Uh, yeah, this is this speed is not ideal. How much longer until we're done charging? Only like three hours, sweetie. Ah! You gotta use stuff like this charge points for the, the commoners as we call them this is the common person charging so what i want to do is i want to get my charge point app open my friend steven and i are going to have some lunch and i'm going to charge it while i'm eating start charge start charging yes if i was at a supercharger i'd be charging right now and probably eating food already This is real time. Oh, get my little attachment here, my little dongle. Okay. Did charge point cut me off? No, they didn't. Awesome, it's charging. Okay, so I'm getting 18 miles an hour. Whatever, I'll take it. Let's have some lunch, all right? Do some right. This is what you do when you have to wait to charge. You gotta have some fun. We've got some scooter actions here. That. This is the contingency plan because when the charging doesn't work out, this is how we're gonna get around. So we're gonna go get some lunch, hop on the scooters, and by the time we get back, it will only have charged maybe six miles or so. So, thank you for that. <laughs> so far, we've been gone for about six minutes, so I've gained approximately zero miles of charge so far, which is good. Had it been a supercharger, I'd be like halfway done by now, but whatever. It is what it is. Thanks, Tesla. <laughs> <laughs>
How many miles of range do we get back? All right, so I passed the time of, I don't know, 11 hours or so waiting for my car to charge. What on earth do I do now? I called my mom. Happy, happy. I said, you got to wash this bed. You say you had to go to a laundry mat. I said, that's not a safe place to go. Why don't you go in the basement? Right. Oh, I go in the, well, that's that. I go in the basement. Found my tax return and cut my toenails. Ow. Now I'm starting to turn into a hippie, trying to make my face as baby soft my dome piece. Now I'm not one for buying overpriced nonsense, as you all know. So someone at Harry's happened to come at me for looking a little homeless. I couldn't argue that, but some of you may not know what it's like to have beautiful, sensitive skin, but there's a solution. So first, Harry's has refills starting at only $2, which is less than my chicken sandwich at my favorite restaurant, and they guarantee a close, comfortable shave with a 100% money back guarantee. Glorious, and Harry's manufactures their own razor blades in their factory in Germany, and things from Germany are cool. And the Germans are quite sharp, so I can side with this. Plus, refills are delivered straight to your door on your schedule. No more waiting in lines at the drugstore. Maybe they'll even deliver it to my car while I shave and wait 10 more hours for charging to complete. So if you want a nice razor to tame your mane, the boys at Harry's will hook you up with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. Redeem your trial set for this $3 when you go to harrys.com slash richrebuilds. Thanks for sponsoring this episode so I could buy bulk mailing lists to send supercharging requests to Tesla. A staggering 11 miles. Wow. All right, guys, we're almost here. We're gonna charge real quick. I'm gonna be on the way. I think it's in this thing. There's a charger over here somewhere. Where is it? Ah, I got it. There we go, perfect. All right, I'm just gonna park. Dad, why did we stop the car? We're gonna charge real quick. Don't worry about it. Where are we? We're charging the car. Dad, I don't have time for this. Why are we here? No, we have to charge real quick. It won't take long at all, I promise. Like how long? Like an hour and a half, two hours, yep. tops. Nope. Yeah, I'm having my boyfriend come down. Where are you going? I'm calling my boyfriend. No. Hey, up. hey, no. hey. Bye. She's sassy. What kind of car does he have? Dad, are you serious right now? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a long <laughs> time, right? You know what? Can you work and pick me up too? Honestly, like he's gonna have to. <laughs> How you like those examples so far? Pretty crazy, huh? Uh, those are actually real world examples. Uh, there wasn't really much exaggeration there, except maybe the kids playing around a little bit. But uh, those are real world things that you have to deal with when you don't have supercharging. One of Tesla's claims to fame is that they have the ability to charge very quickly. Uh, almost on a similar level to a gas-powered car. Remember a while back when Elon Musk had that example uh, of doing a battery pack swap uh, versus filling up an Audi with gas, and he was able to achieve the battery swap very quickly in similar time that a vehicle would, would take to pump gas. Now, uh, obviously, that didn't work out very well. It was kind of swept under the rug. They didn't really talk about it ever again. But that's one of Tesla's claims to fame. They know that people need to get places very quickly, so having the inconvenience of having to charge an EV can be quite time consuming because, you know, time is money, obviously. Now, the problem is, is that there's a huge penalty to pay, as I showed you guys. If your car isn't fully charged at all times, then you're kind of screwed in a way because you could have up to a two to three hour penalty to pay if you decided that, hey, you know what, I forgot to charge my car or maybe uh, where you live in an apartment complex it may not necessarily have the right charging infrastructure. So you can have a Tesla there, but on your way to your actual job, you could charge in the meantime or charge at your work, for example. Now, the thing that's happening now is when I have to make larger trips, because I'm not really the typical Tesla owner, uh, a lot of Tesla owners are a little bit more consistent with where they go. So for example, they have charging at home, and in a lot of cases they complain to their work, so they have charging at their work as well. Uh, me, unfortunately, I don't really have that convenience because I'm a YouTuber, obviously, and I have to go from place to place, not really knowing where there's going to be charging infrastructure. For example, a lot of my um, trips involve me going to Pennsylvania, for example, sometimes Montreal, and very recently, Texas. So a quick example of that is I have to plan a trip to, to Pennsylvania coming up very soon. And the unfortunate part is due to having no supercharging or DC fast charging, that's going to make that trip absolutely agony. 
So in, in most cases, what I would do driving to Pennsylvania, let's just say for about six and a half, seven hours or so, uh, it would take me about maybe one stop, maybe two stops, 30 to 45 minutes each, which isn't bad. It's a normal kind of stop, what you take for a trip that long. Um, and that wouldn't be that bad. Unfortunately, having no DC fast charging and having to use standard level two charging makes that trip almost double in time. It really does. And I have to think to myself, uh, at what point is it is it no longer worth it? Like what 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 am I fighting for exactly? Uh, the choices are to either um, continue as is and just say, hey, listen, I'm driving an EV. This is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, I got the car for cheap. I should just suck it up and, and deal with it. Or do I buy another Tesla and, and say a clean one and say, okay, this is what I'm doing. Uh, or do I go to something else, for example? And one of the reasons why I'm leaning towards um, not buying another Tesla is because the name of the channel is Victory Builds, obviously, and I have to build stuff. And if I'm in a position where I'm not building anything, what am I really doing? What content is that car going to provide for me? Me buying a Model 3 makes me like the 6,000 other Model 3 Tesla channels out there and doesn't really set me apart in, it in any way. So that's the dilemma coming up. And uh, right now, what I have to do is I have to call my friend uh, from Demonology on YouTube. Uh, he wants me to come to Texas to visit him for a, a racing event. And I have to give him the news that because my car can't supercharge, it would normally take 27 hours in a gas car to get there. It's going to take me about probably 36 if I could supercharge, but it could very well take over 100 hours uh, to get there because I don't have supercharging, nor do I have fast DC charging. So this is a real thing. Uh, people may say, you know what, um, suck it up, stop complaining. But, you know, this is one of Tesla's main features and, and driving day to day on a, on a short range basis is fine. But if you actually want to go somewhere like I want to do and I want to show the people, hey, look, look at what EVs can do. Look at what I built. Uh, it no longer serves that purpose. But either way, watch this. Hey, man, what's going on? You know, I've been trying to get in contact with you. I know. I get I... you to calm down. Hey, man, what you going to do, man? You going to bring one of them electric cars I'm down gonna... to the big showdown. YouTubers call out. King Will and Taz, Dunk Master versus Demonology. What you going to do, Rich? I'm going to bring, I, I mean... I want to bring my Tesla, but uh, the thing is, like, I, I can't, I can't supercharge it anymore. So it's gonna take me sixty hours to get down there. Man, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, I can't be waiting for you. Man. In those damn sixty hours. Look, I got some advice for you. Go get rid of that electric car and get you a Mopar. Listen, get listen. rid of that electric car and get you a Mopar, Rich. Listen, if, if, <laughs> if I were to get rid of that car, I would lose all my subscribers. They'd start riding in the streets. I don't about them subscribers. <laughs> get rid of that electric car <laughs> and get you a Mopar so you can have you some power, Rich. Right. It's 60 hours, dude, to charge it. Yeah, 60 hours. Hey, but hey, you know what, though? Listen, 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 right? Here's the thing. Here's the thing you're not thinking about right now. What, what, what is that, brother? Think about the environmental impact. Okay. Man, ain't nobody got <laughs> Don't miss it, Rich. I'll be there. Well, either, either, maybe I'll be there in spirit. I'll be there one way or the other. All right. <laughs> hey, man, it's gonna be it, it's, it's gonna be a good one. Everybody's coming. Don't miss it. Right. See you there, brother. Now, having no supercharging is really one of the best things that happened to me. Uh, for a while, I've been spending more time with the kids in the car. Bye. Playing games, having fun. Ow. Uh, also talking to my mom on the phone, as you saw, which is really fun too, but it really taught me just how important, uh, supercharging really is for Tesla's legacy and the ability to really move forward and have a head start against other EVs. Because right now I'm thinking of other EVs like the Audi e-tron, for example, and, and the Taycan, and it's, they're compelling because right now I'm at the spot where. I'm in the same boat as those cars. The only difference in me getting a, an e-tron or, or Taycan is that they actually have fast DC charging. So me getting a wrecked Taycan right now uh, would kind of make sense because once I rebuild it, odds are they will keep the DC fast charging. Tesla no longer does that. Uh, similar to the Audi e-tron, I'm sure they have different policies where they say, hey, listen, you know what? You built the car. Uh, it, it's yours to keep now, and you could go ahead and do it. Uh, Tesla kind of, you know, removing features after the fact is it gets a little old and annoying after a while. Uh, don't get me wrong. The cars are great. 
but I'm I'm slowly starting to kind of get where this is going. And uh, I think it might be that time. So either way, um, either it might be a different EV manufacturer at this point or uh, potentially gas. Yeah, you heard that right, potentially gas. Uh, the the I'll tell you, the me having to get places uh, at, a, at a regular amount of time is becoming more and more important. Let's just say I have to go to, uh, you know, three or four meetings a day, not being able to fast charge, that power runs down very, very quickly. And it starts to become an inconvenience for me personally. So either way, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Love, peace, and chicken grease. And I'll see you guys next week. Oh, and last but not least, shout out to Sean, who is a fabulous actor, by the way. He took that role pretty seriously. He had me fooled for a minute. He actually seemed really upset. We were just kidding around. Uh, shout out to my daughter as well. She doesn't really have a boyfriend. And also my youngest as well. I know her seatbelt wasn't as tight as it should have been, but we were just sitting in the parking lot anyway. So take care, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys later.